Hi, PS1 is the talk of the town. Have you gone and seen the film? I did. Not first day, first show, but definitely first day. I went in the evening and I enjoyed the film immensely. I came away feeling very happy. The film has been very successfully released and it has been received with rapture by audiences. There is a lot of controversy, of course, which has come up later, which is to be expected of anything that is successful. Let us leave all those controversies aside and look at what is really the history behind Pony and Selvan, the novel. Begun in 1950, the novel was serialized in the Kalki magazine till May 16th, 1954. It comprised five volumes and when published, the entire work as one book would take up 2,300 pages. It is not history, but it is faction, fact mixed with fiction. And only an expert like Kalki Krishnamurti could have done this. Therefore, we ought to know what is the story of Kalki Krishnamurti. R. Krishnamurti was born on September 9th, 1899 in Buddha Mangalam in Tanjavur district. He participated in the freedom struggle from the 1920s, went to prison thrice, was a close associate of Rajaji, but it is his writings that most people remember. Beginning with the 1920s, under the pseudonym of Kalki, he began to write. He started with the magazine Navashakti and later moved to Ananda Vigadan, run by S.S. Vasan. He became the magazine's editor in the 1930s. And he began to write prodigiously for that magazine. His first work to attain fame was Kalvan in Kadali, which came out early in the 1930s in Ananda Vigadan. Then came Tyagabhumi late in the 1930s, which was made into a film as well. The three novels which are based on history may have brought Kalki everlasting fame, but he began life writing humorous articles and reviews. He wrote reviews of plays, of cinema, of Carnatic music performances, and humor was the bedrock of his writing. He then wrote a number of short stories and novels with socialistic themes. But then it is the three historic novels that brought him everlasting fame. In the chronology of writing, he first wrote Parthiban Kanavu, which came out in 1942. And then came Sivakami in Sabadam between 1944 and 1946. And then came Puni in Selvan between 1950 and 1954. All of them were serialized not in the Anandavagadan, but in the magazine Kalki, which came out in 1941. That year, Kalki and his close friend T. Sadasivam, the husband of the renowned singer M. S. Subalakshmi, resigned from Ananda Vigadan and decided to promote a magazine of their own. Kalki was by then such a household name that the magazine took his name. M. S. Subalakshmi acted in a film called Savitri and that money was channeled into starting the magazine and it became a success thereafter. Such a magazine required a lot of writing and Kalki perhaps wrote the three historical novels in order to keep the magazine going. Sequentially, if you look at it from history and not from the chronology of writing, Shivakami in Sabadam comes first, Parthiban Kanava comes next and then comes Pony in Selvan. It was of course Pony in Selvan that would give him everlasting fame. Pony in Selvan is not history, but it is a historic novel. It's based on history. And what is the basis of that? It deals with the imperial Cholas beginning from the 10th century. There was a strange conundrum in the Chola dynasty. In any royal family or dynasty, you would expect that the eldest son of the king would succeed him. But that did not happen for a long time in the Chola dynasty. King Parantaka's eldest son was Rajaditya, but he died in the battle of Takkolam. And then in 955 AD, when King Parantaka was dying, his second son, Gandharaditya, became the ruler. Gandharaditya had a son, Madurantaka, 
who was born very late in the ruler's life and he was still very, very young when Gandharaditya died. And therefore, the king's younger brother, Arinjaya, became the ruler. When Arinjaya died, his son, Sundarachola, who was older than Madhurantaka, ascended the throne. And by the time Madhurantaka came of age, Sundarachola had three children. The first was Aditya Karikala, the second was the daughter Kundavai, and the third was Arul Mori Varman. Therefore, when Sundarachola began to grow old and ill, a lot of confusion prevailed in the kingdom. There were conflicting claims on whether Madhurantaka, who had been denied the throne for so long, should ascend the throne or whether it should be Aditya Karikala. Suddenly, Aditya Karikala is killed brutally in, the Kadambu, in Kadambur, a mystery that is not entirely resolved after so many years. An inquiry was conducted and several people were indicted, including Ravi Dasan, who was named as the chief conspirator. All of this is available in history. Eventually, when Sundara Chora dies, it is not his younger son, Arul Mori Varman, who ascends the throne, but it is Madhurantaka, the long-awaiting son of Gandharaditya and Sembian Mahadevi, who becomes the king as Uttama Chora. When he dies in 985, Arul Mori Varman finally ascends the throne and becomes Rajaraja Chora, the most powerful, one of the most powerful rulers of the Chola dynasty. This is history. Kalki, from there, created a great novel for all of us to delight in. And because it was a novel, he introduced several new characters. The first is, of course, the female protagonist, the villain of the piece, Nandini. She has no historic basis. Nandini is married in the novel to Periya Parivetarayar, one of two brothers, when in history there was only one Parivetarayar. They were not two. Arvar Kadiyan, that impish, humorous, but at the same time, very single-minded, focused man who is forever wandering around in the novel is not a historic character either. And then Poongkurali. There are several others whom he created just for the novel. Anbil Aniruddha Brahmarayar, the minister of, of Sundara Chora, of course, was a real-time character, a real-life character. Having crossed all these people, if we now come to the, what we can call as the hero of the novel, Vandiyatevan. What do we know of him? Vallavarayan Vandiyatevan, who is practically in every page of Pony and Selvan. And he is the man who carries the novel on his back. Though it is named after Raja Raja as Pony and Selvan, the actual hero of the story is Vandiyatevan. How? What do we know of him in history? Just two lines. In TV Sadasiva Pandaratar's story of the later Choras, brought out in 1949, he is dismissed in two lines. It says that Vandiya Tevan was probably a descendant of the eastern Chalukyas of Vengi and he married Kundavai Pirati, the younger sister of Aditya Karikala. That's all that we know of him. Kalki took liberties with that and he made him a member of the Varna dynasty and he makes him the central character in the novel. There is really no basis in history for Vandiya Tevan being such an important character. But today, can we imagine the story proceeding without Vandiya Thevan? Such is the power of Kalki's pen. Where did Kalki get the inspiration for such a character? We need to see that. Kalki, that brilliant writer, also had a brilliant biographer. If he attained immortality writing Ponni in Selvan, Ponni in Pudalvar was the title that Sunda, a very talented writer and a broadcaster later with the BBC, gave when he wrote Kalki's biography. And in that, we get to see some fascinating nuggets. Kalki himself was a child of the Kaveri River. After all, he was born by its side. And therefore, the name Punni. Why does Ka Kaveri get the name Punni? Because it, was, it made Tanjavur the rice belt of South India. And rice was like gold for the farmers over there. They made their money. They earned their livelihood on it. Therefore, the river became Punni. Pun. Pun is gold. Punni is the river. And therefore, Punni. And just like Arulpuri Varman in the novel drowns and is rescued, and just as Vandiya Tevan keeps going around saying that he has been predicted with a great disaster in water, Kalki also drowned in the Kaveri as a child and was rescued. If he depicts Arulmuri Varman as somebody who took rebirth in the Kaveri, 
Kalki himself took rebirth in the Kaveri. And the descriptions that you see in the novel of the river Kaveri and its surroundings were all some things that Kalki himself had seen while he was growing up. But Kalki read a lot of English romances, historic romances as per this biography. He read Sir Walter Scott. More importantly, he read Alexandre Duma. And the Three Musketeers very clearly had a very powerful influence on Kalki. Dartan, the hero of the Three Musketeers, is probably the inspiration behind Vandiyatevan. And then, the female protagonist who is a villain, Nandini, Milady in Three Musketeers, is that character. Periya Parivetarayar, probably based on Cardinal Rishalu. Aditya Karikalan, probably on the Duke of Buckingham. There are so many other parallels. And then, if you proceed further down Pony in Selvan, and probably that will come in PS2, we have an incident going back several years in history, where when Madurantaka is being given birth to by Sembi and Mahadevi, a maid in the palace is also giving birth to a baby and the two babies get interchanged. This is probably from The Man in the Iron Mask, also by Alexandre Duma, where Louis XIV has a twin brother, identical, and a man who has to go around life in an iron mask so that nobody can recognize his true identity. That became a very successful Tamil film in the 1950s, Uttama Putran, starring Sivaji Ganesan and Padmini. Probably Kalki took inspiration from Dumas, the man in the iron mask, for that particular episode, which is very key to the entire novel. One of the reasons for this novel's great success were the drawings that accompanied it when Kalki first wrote. And that was by Maniam, a great artist who studied in the College of Arts, which later became the Government College of Fine Arts in Egmo. And he accompanied Kalki when Kalki went in 1950 to Sri Lanka to research this particular novel. And it was Maniam's drawings that were as powerful a pull as were Kalki's writings. And the novel was received with rapture by the reading public. Just to give you an idea of what the novel could do, when Kalki magazine first started coming out, they were printing 12,000 copies for every issue. By 1950, when Pony and Selvan started coming out, the circulation had gone up to 73,000 copies for every issue. That was the impact of the novel on the magazine and on the reading public. At the end of the novel, when Kalki showed Raja Raja not ascending the throne but handing it over to Madurantaka Uttama Chora, the public was angry and disappointed. They even wrote letters to Kalki. And he had to explain to them that that was history. Madurantaka did rule and there was no way that he could have changed history when it came to the actual facts that took place. But the people had fallen in love to such an extent with the character. Why did they do it? Post-independent India probably needed heroes. We had grown up on a steady diet of English historians who were telling us that our kings were all useless, they were debauched, that our history was bad and that it needed the English to come and give us new life. Post-independent India was looking for heroes, role models whom it could take to. And Raja Raja became that role model. The swashbuckling Bandiya Tevan became that role model as well. Kalki gave Raja Raja a new name, Pudni in Selvan. Raja Raja in his stone inscriptions gives himself a lot of titles, but Pony in Selvan is not there. But just like Pony in Selvan attained immortality as Raja Raja, Kalki attained immortality as the writer of Pony in Selvan. Today, when you go and watch this film, remember that it is not history. It's a film. It's a work of art. And that film is based on fiction, which is Pony in Selvan. Pony in Selvan is a work of fiction based on history. So history is twice removed from the film when you actually see it. Keep that in mind and you will enjoy the film thoroughly. Go ahead and watch it. Bye for now. Thank you.